All right, I haven't touched anything yet. This uh, water pressure regulator is not working. This is the water coming in from the street. This I'm in the basement and I'm standing up on a chair. Then it goes up to a shutoff valve. And I'm gonna shut that valve off. So that's the direction the water goes if you think of it like that. So that's shut off, this is on. This is the water pressure regulator. This is the adjustment for it. It needs to be around 50 PSI from what I've read and heard. Ours goes anywhere from 50 to 70, so clearly a problem there. And then the water continues into the rest of the house. Uh, so what I want to do is swap this guy out. I have the new one right here from Home Depot. You can see the arrow pointing the direction it goes. And this one has an arrow on that side, the direction it goes. So I'm actually going to flip it over. Actually, you know what? I could put it like this too, huh? I guess it doesn't matter. So I check the length of it, looks about right. I check the width of those threads, they look about right. So I'm hoping this is a pop out the old one and pop in the new one. We'll find out if it's that easy. And they it came with some adapters, so we'll see if I need those or not. I'll put those on top of this freezer for now. All right, so what I'm gonna do first, this is a 12 inch adjustable wrench and it's not even close to fitting. So they make chain wrenches, which are probably adequate, but I'm going to use these channel locks and get them open to the right channel uh, and then try and loosen that nut a little bit. Probably not the ideal way to do it, but that's what I'm doing because that's what I have. All right, so here now it's off. You can see what that connection looks like. It's just a flat piece of uh, brass. This is another flat piece of brass with the nuts locked on there. It had two washers, one on the top, one on the bottom. This is the old one. And <clears throat> here's our new one. And I have it backwards to make sure those arrows go the right way. And I'm going to try to replace those rubber washers if there's one the right size in that bag. Otherwise, I'm going to reuse these old ones. Alright, so I've installed the new one. Right there. And I tightened these down. They weren't super tight, so I snugged them up pretty well. But I didn't want to snug them too much because there's uh, rubber in there. I don't want the rubber to just smash and fall into the pipe or something. Uh, and now... The big moment. Actually, I already turned it on, but I wanted to pretend like I was waiting till the video was going. <laughs> so when I first turned it on, the water went and you could hear it filling up the pipe where it had drained out. <clears throat> now, when I took the uh, pipes loose, I was expecting water to come out, obviously, because there's water in the pipes and all. So I put a bucket down there. You can't see it very well in this video, but there's water all over the place and all over me. It's winter and I just got a nice cold shower from this stupid thing. So now what I have to do is go and get my pressure regulator and uh, adjust this thing. There's the lock washer. I was trying to get this so y'all could see it. And there's the little label for this. <clears throat> the range is 15 to 75. My understanding is you want it around... 50 uh, and this one it kind of works backwards of what I would think maybe you guys would think it makes sense but <clears throat> when you tighten this it allows more pressure through when you loosen it it allows less pressure through which is kind of backwards of what I would have thought I would have thought you loosen the valve more water goes through but it kind of works backwards of that but anyway I'm gonna put my pressure regulator and have my wife call me on the phone or call her on the phone and have her watch it upstairs where I can screw it in to know where to put it here and then adjust it down to 50 and when you're adjusting it uh, previously I have not had to open a valve or anything to drain the excess water this thing somehow manages to lower the pressure even though there's no water escaping anywhere I'm not sure how it does that but that's what seemed to work before this is the water pressure regulator, or I'm sorry, the water pressure gauge. It's about 15 bucks or so at Home Depot. And it's a garden hose. Uh, anywhere you can put a garden hose, you can put this. I'm in the mud sink, 
in the washroom next to the mud sink, or at the mud sink. And this happens, this faucet happens to have uh, threads like you'd put a garden hose on it. So I'm just going to put that guy on there. And then turn on the water. And you can see we're right at about 49, which is perfect. I want to keep it under 50. So what this little red dial does, and it doesn't work so great so well, but uh, what it does is you can leave it overnight and whatever the highest the pressure was overnight, let, let, like let's say it goes up to 70 like it did last night before I changed the regulator. What you'll see in the morning, even if the current pressure is down to 49, you can tell that it at one point in time got up to 70. Now what I notice happens is, uh, I'll kind of show you here when the pressure jumps up, you can see that little needle just kind of goes flying. So if the pressure jumps up from like 30 to 40 or something, or 40 to 50 or whatever, no big deal. But this thing will go flying and then you don't really know what the high was. So what I've done overnight is just not use any water. And then when you turn the water on and turn it off quickly, that's when that needle tends to jump. But if you don't do that like overnight, then you don't really have that problem. Okay, I hope this was helpful.